everyone, Hanny here today, and I am here with a super awesome and special video. Today I'm going to be doing the beginner's guide to the K-pop fandom. And I wanted to make this video to help out some of you K-pop noobs out there because I know when I first started getting into the K-pop fandom, I was in way over my head and I just, I had no idea what was going on and I really wish there would have been someone that's like, okay, this is this and this is this, instead of having to do like all my own research and figure out all this nonsense. So I'm here today to help you and if you're if you've been in the K-pop fandom for a while, you probably already are going to know everything I'm going to talk about, but if you're not, then this is the perfect place to start. I should probably start out with defining what is a fandom, and a fandom is basically a fan club or just a group of people who are a fan of the same thing. For example, the Marvel fandom. You have a group of people all across the world, all over the internet, all over everywhere that are a fan of the Marvel Universe. So, being in the K-pop fandom means you are a fan of K-pop. Pretty self-explanatory. However, within the overall K-pop fandoms, there are fandoms for each individual group. And these group fandoms usually have their own group name and often group color and their own little jokes and quirks that make them them. For example, Super Junior's fandom is, no is known as ELF, which stands for Everlasting Friend, and their color is Sapphire Blue. It's a really good idea to familiarize yourself with a lot of these fandoms because even if you aren't necessarily a member of that particular group's fandom, it's nice to know like what someone means when they say, I'm a VIP, or I'm an ELF, or I'm a schwul. Then you're like, what? What does that mean? So it's a good idea to learn the names for these groups just so you aren't completely lost when people are talking about their various fandoms. And as you start to browse YouTube comments and the general internet, you will probably notice that some fandoms come up more than others. And these fandoms are generally from what's known as the big three companies in K-pop, which are SM Entertainment, YG Entertainment, and JYP Entertainment. If you're getting into K-pop, it's probably because of a group from one of these three companies. Some super popular ones, 21 and Big Bang from YG Entertainment, and then 2PM, GOT7 from JYP, and then you have groups like Girls' Generation and EXO and Super Junior from SM Entertainment. These companies are just some of the most well-known, but there's plenty of other smaller companies that have some pretty well-known groups such as BTS and VIX, which both come from smaller companies, but they still have a pretty large fandom. So company size doesn't necessarily mean everything, but for the most part, the most popular groups seem to come from those big three. Now the most exciting part of any K-pop fandom is comebacks. Comeback is a word you will probably hear a lot in the K-pop fandom, and what a comeback means is it is a set date or period of time where a group comes back from being on hiatus and we get things like interviews and just music shows and just general awesomeness and of course the most important thing a new album if you're into k-pop it's probably because you like the music and every k-pop album sort of has some of the same things going for it each k-pop album is usually for the most part in a book or box format Sometimes some companies like to do some fancy stuff and just go way out of the ballpark. But generally they are in a book-like format or a box-like format and they usually have a CD, a photo book, and a photo card. There's either individual photo cards where you can try and get your favorite member. A lot of people trade or sell photo cards to try and get their favorite members. Or you can get group photo cards, such as this one, that have all the members. Generally, people want individual photo cards. Individual photo cards are my personal favorite, but group photo cards are also pretty cool. Not every album has photo cards. Um, a lot of SM Entertainment repackaged albums do not have photo cards. A lot of YG albums don't have photo cards. So not every album has a photo card. But even if they don't have photo cards, there's usually something else special, for example, a special member disc or a little special member photo book or something 
unique for every single album. Usually you get something special in every single album, and that's part of the fun of collecting K-pop albums and photo cards. Speaking of photo cards, usually the most coveted photo card is a photo card of your ultimate bias or UB. If you see someone talking about their ultimate bias or UB, it means this is their absolute favorite person in K-pop. Nobody else just comes close to them. They are the greatest, they are the best, and that person just loves that particular K-pop idol. Your ultimate bias can be from your ultimate bias group, or it may not. It really doesn't matter, but your ultimate bias is like the person that you love the most in the entire K-pop world. For example, my ultimate bias is Top from Big Bang, and Big Bang also happens to be my ultimate bias group. The group that I love more than any other K-pop group. But that doesn't necessarily, they don't necessarily have to correlate. Like, your ultimate bias could be in your not ultimate bias group. Now if someone's just talking about their bias, that usually means that's their favorite member in that particular group. So for example, my bias in block B is PO, or my bias in BTS is Jin. So every group usually a person will have a bias in that group. There's some groups, however, that it's super super hard to pick a bias for, and so sometimes people don't have biases for groups just because they love all of them so much. But for the most part, you will have a bias for pretty much every group that you're a fan of. Now we have one of the most hated things in K-pop, and that is the bias wrecker. And the bias wrecker is a member of a group that is just constantly threatening your bias's position. Like, you love your bias so much, but then there's this other member over there, and he or she is just driving you crazy with every little thing they do, and they are just sort of threatening your bias's position. And you don't really want to switch biases, because that's just, uh, you feel bad about that, if you know what I mean? So, the bias wrecker is, like, the one member that you just have a super love-hate relationship with, and... Things can just get really complicated with that. Now, besides just biases and bias records and ultimate biases and all that sort of thing, members in K-pop groups also have specific, like, purpose. Like, they're in the group for a reason. They could be a singer, they could be a rapper, they could be a dancer. Those ones are all pretty self-explanatory. But there's two other positions that are sort of unique to K-pop, and I'm going to explain what they are. The first special sort of k-pop position is the visual and the visual of the group is usually the face of the group and like considered by the k-pop industry or company to be the most attractive member of the group so regardless of their other talents they are specifically a part of this group for face value for what they look like and just their overall appearance because appearances are often what sell like groups if that makes sense that might seem kind of shallow but I mean let's be real a lot of k-pop stars are pretty dang attractive and that sometimes can help get their music more well known and more listened to so for example Choi Shi Wan is the visual in Super Junior he is considered by SM Entertainment to be the most attractive member of the group and just because a group member is a visual doesn't necessarily mean they don't have other talents because they obviously do if they're in a k-pop group it's not easy to be in one but they are just considered to be the most attractive member of the group whether or not you agree with that opinion is up to you but by the company's standards that is what they are and the second special k-pop position is the maknae and the maknae is the youngest member of that particular group so it is a role that they are put into whether they like it or not. The youngest member of the group is usually the member that gets teased the most simply because they can't really do anything about it because everyone else is older than them. And in Korea, it's like a big deal about being older than someone, younger than someone. It all, ha it all changes how you speak to them and how you treat them and everything else. So being the, the youngest member of a group can suck sometimes because everyone's older than you and you don't really get to talk back to them however much you'd like to. However, along with the visual, the maknae is not just there to be the youngest member of the group. Maknae's are often super, super talented, such as Jungkook from BTS or Kyuhyun from Super Junior. Both guys are super, super talented, 
and just super amazing. And But they just happen to be the youngest members, so they just kind of get shoehorned into being a magne. Now, even one step further below being a visual or a magne or anything like that, there's the trainee. And a trainee is someone who is currently working under a company, but they haven't debuted yet. They haven't release their first album, they haven't had their first comeback or anything like that. So for example, Icon, the group Icon, was were trainees under YG for quite a while until they debuted very recently, but a lot of times people get to know groups and get to learn groups members' names before the groups even debut, back when they're in their trainee days. So just because a group's a trainee or a certain person is a trainee doesn't necessarily mean they aren't known at all because just because they haven't released music yet. It's just that they haven't had their first official album and they aren't officially an artist in that company, but it means they're getting there, they're working on it, they're almost there type thing. And the last thing I'm going to talk about before I wrap up this video is something called Sasang Fans. And if you follow my channel, I actually made an entire video about this. So if you are kind of interested in it after I explain it in a moment, you can click right here and click down below. I'll put the links down below and watch the video that I made about that. So what a Sasang fan is, is they are a quote fan of a particular idol or a particular group that kind of devotes their life into stalking and just harassing this particular group or member and just doing really questionable and kind of scary things to these K-pop stars you know, stalking them, hiding in their rooms, sending them gross, weird things, hiding in bathrooms, trying to kidnap them, just all sorts of incidents happen because of these Sasang fans. And they're kind of terrifying and kind of bad. So I hope you have a good time in the K-pop fandom, but just don't, don't take it too far. Don't become one of those people. Anyway, I hope you guys all enjoyed. I hope this video was somewhat helpful to like any of you or even if you're you've been in the k-pop fandom for years i hope you guys enjoyed and as i always do i'm going to recommend a song for you guys to listen to like i do at the end of every single video and today i recommend rock by 17 it is off of their newest album boys b and i think it's just a really fun and catchy track i really like Manse, but like Rock is definitely a close second in terms of the overall album. And I just think it's a really awesome, catchy song. And if you liked Manse or Adore You from the first album, you should really listen to Rock because it's super cool and I love it. And you'd probably like it as well. Anyway, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and feel free to comment down below if you have any questions or just anything to discuss. I'd be happy to answer them. And don't forget to subscribe to me and Katie because. We talk about K-pop and K-dramas all the time, and it's super awesome, and we'd really appreciate your subscription. So, I hope you guys all enjoyed, and I will see you again soon. Bye!